All right, Rishika, thanks for coming. Um, cool, can you just tell me about yourself, you know, where you grew up, that kind of mm, stuff? My name is Rishika. I'm 19 years old. I grew up in Kurg. I, I studied in an international school, so I was exposed to a lot of like new age thinking and yeah, I think we have this crowd mentality. If one popular idea sticks on, then you're either with it or you're narrow-minded. So what, like going along with pop, like how did that affect you? I was just kind, kind of coming to terms with this thing called identity and I had a lot of self-esteem issues, a lot of confidence issues. I didn't know where my worth or my value came from. How is your relationship with your father right now? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> psychologist. Uh, for a large part of my adolescent life, I lived without my dad. He wasn't around. I didn't know what it meant to have uh, an authoritative figure in, in my house, someone who would guide me and direct me. And I didn't have somebody to kind of um, pick me up when I came back home after a breakup, and I, I didn't know what to do. Um, I think the years that I spent away from him, I just had these thoughts that he didn't want me. Maybe he doesn't want a girl child, and he didn't love me. And um, it's it just made me feel very unwanted, very rejected. And so these kind of things, uh, it, it really kind of left a void in me. And I would try to, see, I would seek that in, in the men in my life. I would latch on to anybody with a kind of a strong personality and and that's honestly all I was looking for, just a little bit of attention. I just wanted someone to tell me that I will love you no matter what, not because of the things that you do, just because of who you are. At that time, my main source of acceptance were, were my friends. I would drink, I, I was exposed to pornography, I was um, in a lot of really bad relationships. And I thought I would be accepted better if I did these things. And the more I did it, the more I just felt like I was drowning. I was just breaking on the inside. I was trying to fill my void with things that were so temporary and very detrimental to me. There were periods where I would just cry in my room, uh, not knowing what am I doing, who are my friends, does anybody even care? If I'm not on, on this earth tomorrow, would anybody notice or would they care? And how did, how did like, Jesus fill that void now for you? I came, I, I came to a point where I was extremely desperate. I was just asking God for some sort of direction and meaning and purpose. And it was at that time, at this, this very kind of broken place that I just felt like Jesus touched me. And, and that's when I felt rain. It was like sheets of rain pouring through me and it was pouring right through me head to toe. And every part of me that it touched was just lighting up. It felt like the water was uh, living, like it had like charisma and personality, and and um, it was just flowing through me. And I felt the most kind of completeness that I've ever felt. And who who is he? Who is it? Like, what is his personality? Who is he? To, <laughs> you? to me, Christ is the companion. He's always with me. I com I feel him constantly. He's a father figure to me. I've experienced what it's like to not have a father. So when when he was there, when he was guiding me, when he was uh, showing me that he has made plans for me and that he's already sorted out my future for me. I don't need to worry about these things. I, I saw him as a father. And then I saw him as a friend, someone who's who's with me by my side, who's accepting constantly. And the more I get to know him, in Versi, I'm, I'm realizing the more I get to know myself. And in him, I'm finding identity and purpose. And I think Christ, at the end of the day, the Bible says that He is love. He's He's not just a loving God. He is love. He is completely love. And there's nothing um, bad about Him. There's nothing that I need to fear in that relationship. I can completely open myself up to Him because I know He only wants good for me. Four years ago, when you were lonely, in one of those places where you felt lonely and there's no one there for you, mm -hmm. what would you tell that, Rishika, yeah. about God? Four years ago, my... Um, my predominant thought about God was that he's a very distant God and that I need to do so much to either be close to him or to be away from him. Just remember, nothing nothing you do, as horrible and terrible as it is, nothing you do can actually pull you away from God. Nothing you do is going to make you fall out of his plan for you or nothing you do is going to make you any less of a of a daughter in his eyes.